at the moment when I was faced that I have to make this decision, I, I went nuts. It was at the time that I was, I wanted to become a singer. I had a few weddings here and there. I was part of a choir. And like you said, getting divorced was taboo. And I, I was sure that I'm gonna get divorced. I'm gonna be like this divorce guy. Nobody's gonna book me. Nobody's gonna be wanna be affiliated with me. And I was so upset because I had such a colorful life until I got married, mm -hmm. you know, until I found this shidduch and all this Bukharish union with my father passing away. And then, you know, the whole Parsha, I, I thought to myself, really, I need this now. Right, yeah. Welcome back to another episode of Inspiration for the Nation. This week, we sit down with the one, the only Shmuley Unger, and you're going to get a really good glimpse into what it means to be a Hasidic Jew. And more than that, you're going to get to hear the story of Shmuley Unger. It's filled with many challenges. He is someone that lost a parent at a very young age. He went through a divorce early on in his marriage, and his wife and him, they had twins, but they, they had a few complications. But he still persevered. He went through it. He goes through it. And he's such a fun person. We did this late at night and I really enjoyed our conversation. And this week's episode is in memory of Shimon David ben Yaakov Shlema, Miriam Sarabas Yaakov Moshe, as well as Simcha Barrel, David ben Avram Moshe. You will also hear about the wonderful Good Faith Effort podcast that I am addicted to. You will hear about Encore LBA, the way to Really further your career or just help your children if they have autism. And you will also hear about Simcha Time, the revolution, in, the revolution that's taking the Jewish world by storm. So here's my conversation with the wonderful Shmili. I'm Yaakov Langer, and you're listening to Inspiration for the Nation. Okay, here we are with Shmuli Unger. I probably sound so litfish saying that. No, how, how do you pronounce your name? I pronounce my name Shmili. Shmili. Shmili, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not Lee, Shmili. The L is L, not L. You just said it's not L, it's L. I'm no, like, sounds said, exactly it's the same. L and not L. Here we are with Mr. Unger. <laughs> right, We're having a great time. Simple. So I, I'm going to start it off with this again. I'm going to sound super litfish. What type of Hasidish background do you have? What? Um, so this is, this is uh, it's not so simple. I grew up in Monroe in Kirisi Oil. So uh, when I was growing up in the in, in the 90s, there was only one Chayde. There was Satmer and there was the Satmer roof over there. So that's where I grew up. But my parents were not from Monroe. They weren't, Bechlal, they, my, my father was Hasidish, but not Satmer, ultra Orthodox. He came from Brooklyn, from Bar Park, and my grandfather moved to Monroe. So he didn't wear the same hat as the Monroe people. Shabbos, my grandfather wouldn't wear Stramu. And he moved over there, and my mother is from Australia. Mm. Yeah, and she grew up, and uh, she went to Baisyakov, and she learned Chimish Rasha when she was a girl. She grew up with, uh, with a dog and a television. And so, and she married my father. And was, they, she, was she Orthodox? Yeah, she was Chabad. She was Chabad, got it, okay. Yeah, yeah. And they moved to Monroe. So my father is this bub of a guy from Bar Park, and my mother is from Australia, the Chabad. She speaks no Yiddish. And we moved to this ultra Hasidish place in Monroe where the, the biggest deal is the Zetzis and the Tzihoinam. So I grew up, I grew up in Hasidish Echaide, but when I came home, it was, you know, it, it wasn't so ultra Hasidish. Things were very flexible and... I, I guess I was always different. Like at, at our house, we would pronounce it mayonnaise. And in Chayde, they would say mayonnaise. I don't know why until this day. You ever heard mayonnaise? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you heard people say mayonnaise. Yeah, I've heard that. I don't know why. I guess it's just like part of the shprach. I, I don't know. I, but I, I always felt different. And, I, and I, in, in Chayde, I would pronounce it mayonnaise just to be a part of everybody. And, and when I come home I, and my mother would say mayonnaise, I would say, why do you say mayonnaise, you know? And the clothing I would wear, I would wear different clothing. And the chinech I would get, I would get a different chinech. The foods I would eat, like my father, we ate uh, OUD, Entenmann's Donuts, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, Hagendals. You you eat OUD? I I do. I don't want to get canceled now. I, I eat Chol Stam, but I know, like from the world that you're from, that's like totally it's, not yes, a thing. So my father ate it, my mother ate it, my grandfather ate it. It was like a Do you still totally, eat it? Uh, no, not so much, not so but much. not because of the not because of the ashgucha, just because I'm trying to watch what I got. Eat, it. Okay, I that's eat. fair. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, that's but, definitely not healthy. All those OUDs, right, the entomens, and yeah, yeah, the, yeah, that's the not stuff. bad. For... M so, I'm curious, and we'll get more to you. But like, how did your parents meet or get set up? 
because it sounds like they're from different worlds. I mean, yes. surely it's already a different world, but like just if your mother's Chabad, your father's more above of like... A Hasidish. Yeah. I don't know. You know what? We're going to figure it out together. But my mother would always tell me a story of of, of her Shatch, and his name is Shmelar and Tzin. And he's, a, he's an old guy. And he he knew my great uncle from Australia through Sklen. I think he's a Sklenid. And... And he, I, I think my great uncle just told him I have a niece in Australia. My, my mother's parents got divorced mm-hmm. and my grandmother remarried. And so my mother and her stepfather was, was going to become Yichet. She was 17 and by the 18, it would be a problem. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, so my grandmother told my great uncle, her brother, my great uncle, if you can find her a shidduch, a chassidish boy, she wants to marry a chassidish guy. And I don't know how it happened but you know Bashefer is a Yoshev and Mazavik Zavigam and he put them together sometimes I think maybe it's uh, selfish but sometimes I think it's because you know me and my sisters and my brothers uh, you know we needed to be born and do our thing the, the, you know those two had to create these children wow. how many siblings do you have we're four you're four yeah I'm four. me and another three wow so I, I know your father passed away when you were I was 14 young. yes I was 14 what I, like what was that experience like obviously i'm sure terrible it was horrible yeah, yeah. you can imagine yeah. uh he just he lost a lot of weight he lost like 200 pounds in like six months okay and uh was he, he a was he a big yeah he was he was six six two and mm-hmm. he was like 420 pounds mm-hmm. but he wasn't like a, like a, you know lazy guy and not doing stuff he was always he was running up steps and being he was up at five in the morning oh, wow. he was yeah a go-getter but it was a big guy and it and he never went to the doctor. He was being so happy that he lost the weight. And uh, and we went up to my grandfather one one yontav. We would go up to him, say get yontav, and with, it was some chestoira. And he was asking, yeah, I'm gonna guess in the shield. What did they eat in the shield? They served kegel and holipches. And my father would would throw up. This this was a symptom. He couldn't keep the food down. And we were talking to my grandfather, and we were telling him everything that happened and yeah then and Tati went and he threw up and blah blah and was like hey hold the phone is he not feeling well and we were like no he just whatever he just doesn't keep the food down and my grandfather went crazy and Matsu Yontif my parents came to pick us up because my grandfather lived like outside of Monroe like on Seven Springs it's like a 20 minute walk but with a car it's five minutes so my parents would come pick us up and as soon as my father would get there, my grandfather would say, tomorrow morning, I got some doctor and we're going to handcuff you. We're taking you to the doctor. And I went to the doctor and, and they found they found a tumor in his esophagus. They found a tumor in his stomach. And, it, you know, the doctor was very upset. He said, had you come to me earlier, we could have saved you. But it was a stage four already. Oh, wow. Yeah, this was at the end of Simchas at the beginning of the winter. He started taking chemotherapy. And how, how the experience was, I was 14. Actually, I wasn't. I was. I was. I was younger. By the fourteen, it passed away. I was mm-hmm. like thirteen. It was right after my bar mitzvah, and it was just chaos. It was. It, there was. There was nothing. It was. Ah, uh, was. It was horrible. Did you have to like grow up a lot faster after he passed away? I, I guess so. I had to grow up. Yeah, there was no no sitting and waiting around. Nobody was there like like to really help me and to make sure. I I, I did it all on my own. I had one older sister. Mm-hmm. And she, they sent her away to Manchester to a seminary school. And then uh, when I was 15, I also, I left. I went to London to Hitchin, to the Chesed Hitchin. It was a very good yeshiva. I was there for three zmanum. But uh, yeah. Is that, a, is that I, I'm, I'm sound like I'm RS. Is that like a normal, like London? Like, ever go to London? It's not normal. It's normal more to go to Eretz Yisru right, when yeah, you're older. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But sometimes, sometimes it happens. Yeah, interesting. The Bukharim go away to you, a different yeshiva. It sounded like you liked the yeshiva. How about England itself? Did you like the country? I didn't care much for England. I, uh-huh. I, 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 yeah, I wasn't into it. No. You ever heard of Lutzeren? Lutzeren yeshiva? No. It's uh, in, in, in Switzerland, also a big yeshiva. Like from all over the country, all over the world, people go there. Mm-hmm. So Hitchin is the same thing that we had. We have like forty uh, percent of the Bukharim were from from the U.S. and twenty percent from Israel, and the rest from Europe, all over Europe, Antwerp, Belgium, London. Mm-hmm. Mm. How infused was your life with music and singing? Did it was it always like from day one, or did 
something happened that like when you're 20, someone's like, oh, by Zmiris, you could be singing. And then like, oh, you have a great voice. Yeah. So it's interesting because until, until I wasn't like discovered, I had no idea that I can sing. Really? Yeah. I I, I mean, I guess I always sung. That's mm. the word song. I always sang. I'm not sung. even sure. I think. I yeah, think so. No, no, no. So I, I, I would always sing. My father could not sing. And my mother was a good singer. She was, she had a good voice and she grew up in Australia and she was always the soloist and mm -hmm. she sang on the radio. She had a few uh, things. So I definitely take my voice from my mother. And uh, I remember also uh, uh, in Haide, like I said, at home we got one kind of chinuch and in Haide I got a completely different kind of chinuch. Like right now, I don't sing for mixed. Nobody ever told me don't sing for mixed, but it's just, it's my culture. Mm -hmm. But if I would ask my father, if he has a problem, he said, no problem, go. My grandfather, he would tell me, go sing as interheit. So maybe one day I will be singing for mixed, but as of now, it's, uh, you it's know. not what you want to be doing. Yeah, it's not what I want to be doing. And when you say mixed, you mean men and women to get, sitting, sitting together. Sitting together, together yeah. Family seating is something different. In hotel, you know, Matzah Shabbos is also something different. But, right, officially right. but a big a concert, official concert with yeah. men and women sitting together. I would For you, away. that's not, it's not yeah. the thing you want to do. Yeah, so in Chaydir, in Chaydir I got one chinuch and at home a different chinuch. So in Chaydir there was there were singers. I don't want to mention names because you're going to see soon. But there was one particular Hasidic singer. He was famous in Chaydir and everybody knew his songs. And at home, we would listen to Ali Gerstner, Miami Boys Choir, Avram Fried. And those those guys in Chaydir, was not, were, they were not famous because they were also Hasidish. And I can't come and sing, Kala Miss Palel, they wouldn't know what to do with it. <laughs> and so I would come home and I would ask my mother, why don't you buy um, that guy CD? And my mother would say, that guy, he can't sing. I'm not buying his music. <laughs> And I, 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 and I would always think that my mother like so tzirigibli, but she doesn't know what's hip, you know? Right. But the truth is that guy, he was just famous in Monroe. Right. Um, so, so it was in Kita High. Kita High, I was like maybe nine, ten, nine years old, 10 years old. Sorry, Kita Vuf. I was 10 and we went to camp and in camp, uh, everybody is singing all the time. And I don't know why one of the Malamdam chose me, told me, he told me, Sing voz, but zamba mishiach et kimen or the boy in the shalom lam lam imachan abahit. You know these songs. Yeah, yeah. And like I would say something, and the kids would answer. And all right, it was nice. And then at the end of the summer, everybody came back to Chaydir, and they were looking for boys to to uh, audition for the choir for the yomim neruim for the roof in the big shul. And there was uh, supposedly a, a, a goyru for whoever won, blah blah blah. But and this same Malamad, he told me, "Come on, Shmulduvet. My name is Shmulduvet." Shmuel would come, go on the line, you can go audition, we're gonna get you into the choir. And I went and I auditioned and they liked it and I won. And I asked my father, my father would never go into Davin to the big shul. He had a small shul, he went his way, but he told me, Gesundheit, if you wanna go sing for the roof, go sing for the roof. And then uh, at one point the Yerushalayim roof came and they had like a nice big ceremony and they had a few boys singing, I was one of the boys. And then in Kita Tez, there was the CM, we did a CM for 100 Blad Gemura, the whole Kita. And there was also singing, and I was one of the kids singing. And by Hevre Stillam, uh, 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 Shabbos, the whole, all the boys would get together, and there was a guy saying, Shira Malo, da -da -ba -da 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 -da. And when he, he wasn't there, they would ask me like to substitute for him. So there was all these little clues. I had a nice voice, a good voice. I never really loved my voice. There's one, there's one album, one CD, a Pirim CD where I'm singing and I, I think it's horrendous. I even <laughs> remember after the CD came out, I was on the phone with the producer of the album and I was crying. I was literally crying. I, I asked him, how could you do this to me? How could you put out such music? I could show it to you and, and whatever. It's, it's no good. It's no good. You still don't like it? No. Okay. It's definitely. I think they had a problem with the rhythm and they had to fit my... my it's, it's, it goes like something like that and the, the rhythm was it was like messed up so I sound like this like it's not it's not sitting in the timing and mm -hmm. it, 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 it it doesn't sound good and there's a lot of other songs in the same album with different kids and they sound good they have nice songs I had one stupid song <laughs> and it sounded terrible oh, man. so there's one album out there um so then uh, I went to Yeshiva, Yeshiva Katana. My father passed away. I went to Yeshiva to London. I came back and my sister 
became a kala. She got engaged. And my grandfather told me, Shmulduved, you're going to sing at the chasen. I was 17 years old. And I told him, uh, yeah, you think I should sing at the chasen? He says, yes, you sing good. You're singing at the chasen. I told him, you know what? If, you, if we're going to do this, we got to do it right. I want to start taking voice lessons and uh, I want to buy myself a microphone and I need business cards and you know, everything. So, and also for my sister's wedding, I told him I could do a few songs, but I'm not going to take on the whole wedding. You should hire a singer and I'll do a few, a few songs, maybe by the meal, by the dancing a song. And so me and my grandfather came to an agreement. He said he will invest everything. He gave me a hundred dollars every week to go to voice lessons. He bought me a microphone. I remember I needed to have a cordless mic <laughs> because the mic with the wire is just, you know, for amateurs, right. the cordless one is the <laughs> real mic. So he got me a cordless mic and then we printed business cards and there was my phone number and his phone number on there. And he was like, he was 60 years old and he was old school. And I asked him, why, sh why, why should we put your number? He says, what if you don't answer the phone? They need to have a place where they call. I will answer the phone. He's like your agent, I guess. Yes, he was such a character. And, and, uh, and the agreement was I didn't drive. So he would drive me to jobs, to gigs. And whatever the payment is, is 50-50 mm -hmm. for me and for him. And that's how it was. I didn't have a lot of weddings. I remember my first wedding was a friend of mine from Yeshiva and he got married and my grandfather took me to the chasana and uh, it was it was for free the chusin came over to me and says listen i'm not having a singer at the wedding but my father said if you want to take the mic but she is high take the mic but it's up to you i said yes we will do it and i plugged in my mic and and after the, the chasana was it, it was good Afterwards, I ran after the musician to give me the recording and, you know, like the chus, I don't know about the litvisha if you into recordings, but the chasidim, wedding recordings is very hot. Did not know that. Like, I know wedding videos are very big. No, but, but wedding recordings for the chus, they run after the agent or the musician. Where's my recording? I want to hear everything from the chasana. Really? And that's besides from the yeshivas. They always gather all kinds of weddings and they dance to it and they listen to singers and they listen to musicians. Didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah, it's big hack. So, so you wanted that, yeah, so even though you're not the Exactly. So he told me, you know, you're running after me for this recording worse than the chus. <laughs> and I remember he came over. I was still a Bukharin Yeshiva. He came over and he brought me the CD. And I ran up to, upstairs to my bed and I put in my headphones and I started listening to it. And it, it was the, the meal was good. The meal was okay. But when it came to the dancing, now I know how, how to even identify the problem. Back then, I didn't even know. I just knew this is no good. It just sounded I'm, off. I'm, right. It sounded off. And it was pitchy. Like you can be in tune. Oh, it is show my Oh, it can be off tune. Oh, it is show my That's off tune. But then there's off pitch. There's like, oh, it is show my It's like it's like a half note up, half sharp, and mm -hmm. half flat. Mm -hmm. And that that's if you don't hear yourself, you're not used to such loud music. You don't have a real grip, so you float around on the scale. And that's what happened. And I I put it on, and I was horrified. Then I I I you know. I didn't, I, I wasn't dreaming of becoming a singer, but I knew this is not singing and I could do better than this. Mm -hmm. What's going on? I was very deflated, but I didn't give up. And then there was a different uh, friend of mine that took me. Oh, and after that wedding, the one of the came over, gave me a tip, $50. And then the other Mechitin came over and gave me $200. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so on the way home, my grandfather took me home. I told him, this is $125 for you. 125 for me, he told me, no, you have your safe. You make an extra envelope, you write Zaidi. And I trust you, you put my half in that envelope. So we did maybe 10 gigs together. Then, then I got older, I got my own car. So he didn't, uh, he didn't need to drive me. And then his philosophy was, I should go for whatever they give me. $300, $500, no, $500 would be nice, but $200, $100, whatever they give you, nemvus megete, that's what he said. And I, I told him, Zaidi, there's no way, I'm not going for a wedding less than $450. That's like, what the, the the ceiling? No, the the bottom. What's the word? That's the lowest I'm gonna go. Yeah, it's the bottom. Yeah, it's the bottom. Not less than four fifty. And he was upset. He said, "Shmuldu, you're making a mistake. Nobody knows who you are. Whatever. If you get an offer, take it, take it." But I disagreed. I told him I'm not gonna go for three hundred bucks, four fifty, which is also nothing. <laughs> but I had my dignity. I told him four fifty, five fifty, six fifty. Then it went up for for the next uh, maybe three four years. I was doing a lot of these uh, package weddings and with a lot of musicians that not top tier at all. And I was having a hard time. And at one point I changed business cards. I took out my grandfather's number because it 
raised too much questions and you know right 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 as you're getting like more real with it like why is your grandfather's yes, name here right. who is this guy answering <laughs> the phone and i changed my hat it's also an interesting story so my father i said was from bobov and mm. he wore a hoya khabibah hit you know the flat khabibah hit you have any idea what it is you're saying a flat fur hat you know a flat fur hat is in monroe the satmara okay people go like that. but in bobov clothes and bark bells vision it's they wear the same hat, but it's it's higher. It's a hoya khabibah. It's not so uh-huh. flat. It's a little bit higher. Got it. it, it so it's not. I mean, we're talking about hats, not strimals now. Hats, yeah, we're talking Got about it. hats. Yeah. Okay. So there's a flat khabibah and a hoya khabibah. A flat one and a higher one. Got That's it. right. Okay. It's, it's the same beaver material. Got like it. Nice. So when I got bar mitzvah and kitatez, the standard in Monroe was in the in the weekdays you wear a shtofen hit. That's like uh, I don't know how you would call it. Uh, I have no clue what shtofen. What stuffed? stuffed? Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't know what they call it. It's not stuffed at all, but it's it's a, a vachen hat. And then there's for Shabbos we would wear the flacha bieber hit. The flacha bieber. Yes, and my father he he learned in Babov, and he and when he got bar mitzvah he put on a hoyeche bieber hit for Shabbos and the vachen, and he told me shmuduvet. Put on that hat, but I I I didn't want to be different because ninety nine percent of the boys in Chayda were Shabbos, uh, the flat one and the Vachan a different one. I wasn't gonna go wear that, and he told me no problem. He was very easy going, happy go lucky. This one you got this one, and then I was like eighteen nineteen. Somehow I got a lot of bob of a weddings, and I also got to know different kinds of people. I was coming out straight from Monroe and. And I, I saw there's a big world out there, so I just I I didn't feel I didn't feel the the, the hats anymore. So I went to my rabbi and I asked him, "What do you think of me changing? I want to change my hat for the hoy chabibrit, for the weekdays, and Shabbos I will I will wear the flat like I wore till then." And my rabbi said, "You know what? If you're gonna change it, change it completely. You put on the hoy chahit for Shabbos for Vachon, that's gonna be your hat." So that was okay. So that was a it was a big move. And uh, compared to for, for someone like me or someone who's like maybe not even orthodox listening, like obviously I can understand that it's like a big move, but like give me a comparison what that's like. Meaning, like uh, for me, I'm like, okay, so he's wearing the flat hat and wearing the the taller hat. Like, mm-hmm. what's what's that like for me to do? Like, what type of change for you or, or you s- mean for anybody in the yeah community? or anyone? Just to, I I just want to understand that, like what that. So it it would depend how known you are. If if a lot of people know who you are, and all of a sudden you change your levish, it's it's funny. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of big rebbes, uh, uh, I'm not gonna name any names, but they were wearing uh, uh, half 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 pants with the black socks. Right? How do you call it? Uh, pulled up black socks. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even know. But you know what I'm talking yeah. about. So and, and at one point they would wear black socks in the week, and at one point they're wearing white socks during the week. So how how does that happen? But that's, you know, that ever you don't ask any questions. It's, it just became more highly gear, more holy. But, but it was for me in my, for, with my people, it was a move, but nobody ha- knew who I am anyways. Mm-hmm. So not a lot of people could tell me, hey, weren't you wearing a different hat? Like no, nobody made a big deal. Right. But it is, it is something like, I don't know any of my friends who changed their hat. It's like very unorthodox. Mm-hmm. To, like you grew up, this is what you wear. This is your levish. But to you felt it, that it would make change your image somehow or i felt it's more it's more uh inclusive so mm, to say more 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 Hasidish people wear a hoyeche hat because like i said bells klosenberg visionitz uh, most people wear the hoyeche but only satmer and maybe spink and kruler like the off satmer branches pupa those people wear the flach hit you know what they say they say when uh when the ibish did he picked up the vaccine i i think that's kufalayim harke gigas and said and a God said, if you're gonna be Makabal the Torah, it's good. If not, we will bury you. So, and the people were standing there, the Jews were standing there, and God started saying, Well, I'm gonna start. If you don't say yes, I'm starting to drop it. And he started to drop the 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 the, the hill, the barg. And the people wearing the the Stoffen hits, they backed out right away. They said, I give up, I give up, and then the Hoyeche Bieber hitten. They stayed a little bit longer, and then the flag hit, and they they stayed the longest until they backed out. Ah, oh, interesting. That's <laughs> a funny. joke. That's funny. Um, yeah. So I mean, we, I, there's so many more things about the music scene that I want to talk about. But something like that I saw, and I just want to hear a little more about it. Is I'm probably bo- gonna botch it. You were in a choir called Shira. Shira, but I started with the choir before Shira. 
You start, you were in a choir before that. Yes. Because there's a video on YouTube. It's like 10 million views of like you, Shalom oh, Lemmer's in there. Yeah, that's Shira. That's Shira. Yeah. You saw that video? Yeah. 10 million people saw but it. I, 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 I'm like in the side over there. I, it's, it's interesting I, that you even saw I me. noticed that. I, I only recognize two people, you and Shalom. Me and Shalom. I mean, I'm sure maybe there's other people that I recognize, but I remember you and Shalom in and, there. But I didn't, I, I didn't have a nice uh, Mechibadiga position over there. I, I think <laughs> I even shared mic with somebody. I don't remember that i just remember seeing you in it and i'm like oh the, i guess and i saw that before i knew who you were uh -huh. and then once you know you became even bigger and more famous and then i went back and i saw it i'm like oh he was in that video uh -huh. i never knew that that's funny. so you you did a bunch of like choirs not a bunch of like choirs i did i did one choir zamiros his mm -hmm. name is yoli palachek he has the choir and he was actually the first person to say shmili you have something very special and uh, I, I, we're, we're gonna do this. I want you to be part of the choir, and we're going to Florida with Avram Fried next week, and then we're going to there together doing a concert. And it got me all excited, and I was starting to think like, you know, Mama, I made it. This is a real legit guy. He has a choir, and we're doing this. And uh, then I got married the first time, mm. and and I want to I want to phrase it nice, not for be pechisas covered, but you know there's there's choirs that are more busy, choirs that are less busy, choirs mm -hmm. all kinds of shades and colors. Right. So Zamir is like he was doing he was doing okay, but I wasn't making real money from it. Right. So my wife, my ex, then she told me, what, "What are you doing here? You know, you know, you sing so good. I had a few weddings on my own without the choir." And she said, you know, there's different choirs. Maybe you should go to the other choir. And I told her, you know, I, this guy saw me. He believed in me. I don't want to leave him. Mm -hmm. So I stuck it out for another month or two. And then and then at one point, I, I told her, you know, I'm taking your advice. Let's see if even also a big part of me didn't even believe in myself. Yeah, I'm going to call Shaga Fava Gold from Ashita Choir. He's, he's not even going to listen to me. He's not going to take my call. <laughs> so I didn't even want to put myself through that rejection process. Interesting. Yeah, so, but she pushed me and one day I just picked up a phone, I called Shagafava Gold, I left them a voicemail, I told them, hi, my name is Shmili Onger, maybe you did hear, maybe you didn't hear, but I, I, I'm a part of the Zamira Squire, I, I want to graduate it, and uh, if you would have me, I will be all, all yours. And he called me back and he told me that it's a different choir, he doesn't want to be Matsad anybody, and it was also a different story. Zamiris had like five members, and one of the members was also, uh, how do you say the word in English, had Sveikis. Wasn't sure where, he, if he'll stay there. Exactly. He, no, he was contemplating. That's contemplating. The, okay, yeah. That's word? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I need to learn my, my vocabulary. No, you're good. You're for good. my own thing. So yeah, he was contemplating, and, and he, he was a harmony guy. I was a melody guy. I, I, I don't know any harm. I mean, I can do harmonies, but it's not my, my strong suit. And he was a very flaky guy. And Shira wanted him, and Shira made him an offer. So he went to Shira, but then then uh, Zamir was like telling him, well, how could you do this? So he, he flipped, he went back, and then he went this way. He was all over the place. Mm -hmm. So Shragafavl was telling me, I don't need a, a, a second repeat of this because you see what I'm going through with him. Mm -hmm. I told him, listen to me, I'm not him. I'm quitting Zamiros. I'm not going into Hamazamram or Yedidim. There was other choirs. I told him, if I'm quitting him, I'm not doing choirs. Unless you hire me, I will go with you. If not, I'm just out of the scene and I'm not doing choirs with nobody. And the, the, the next day he calls me up. I have a wedding in Lakewood. So I, so I started with Zamiros. I was there maybe for two years. And then I went to Shira. And Shira was like the big leagues. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And, and at what point did you feel like you made it in the music scene? Well, I still don't feel like I made it. You still it. don't feel no, it? Really? No. Not like, what do you mean I made it? I'm, Baruch Hashem, I'm making a nice living and I, and I, I see the stream. You strike nice. me as, and, and I'm saying this based off because I saw you by a wedding last week, by Yossi Hach's wedding. Right, you and, you're like, and you're very kind and you're like, why don't you come over? Yeah. And and I'm like, I don't, you're busy, you're singing. And like, we could have hocked about you, you know, you already agreed to come on. But I'm like, I'm not going to bother you about this episode. We'll, we'll schmooze on WhatsApp. But you like seemed very sensitive in a good way to like feel like you you try to make me feel good. I'm like, no, you could have come over. And then I'm like, you know, maybe I, like you're very in touch with yourself in a way that maybe like right now you're saying like you still don't feel like you made it. Like, do you I, I'm not saying you're like low self-esteem at all, but like. <laughs> Maybe very self-aware. Yeah, that's a nice word. Self-aware, realistic, not pessimistic, just just real. 
I guess as as you grow, uh, you always want more, right? So mm-hmm. if if you were to tell me five years ago that I'm going to be in this position, I would not believe you. But now that I am here. I see how much more there is to go. You know, I don't have such a nice YouTube thing. Not I yet, have, not yet. Not exactly. So I have 20,000 subscribers. You have over 100. So hello. It's a, I have a big, I have a long Which way Which is to funny because I'm like, I don't have a million yet. Right. So, exactly. so it's yeah. always more. You right. always want more. So for a lot of people in the business, they would say, I wish I was really younger. But I'm looking at myself and I wish I had 100,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. Mm-hmm. So there's always room to grow. And you're saying that I asked you, why didn't you come over? Because it would be nice whenever I... I see people and they say, oh, I'm going to be tomorrow at the wedding there and there. I always say, yeah, wave to me, say hello. Like, why not? Right. Yeah. Which so. is interesting. I, I'm not going to say like most Jewish singers are stultzy. I wouldn't say that. But like, I don't feel like as many Jewish singers are as, I guess, welcoming as you are. Maybe because you feel like you haven't made it yet. So they, therefore, you're I like, don't know. I know I'm, I'm not being such a big owner and saying I like, well, I'm barely making it. I know exactly where I am. Mm-hmm. I'm saying there's a, a, a big way to go still, but I can also look back and see where I'm coming from. Right. But you know, to be to be in, in show business and, and you know, meeting people and greeting people, you have to have, you have to be humble. You have to have humility. You, you can't just be like, oh, I'm this Mr. Macho singer. People are just not going to buy it. And at a certain point, they're going to reject you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's, a, 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 I feel like I'm a very much a, a people's person. I didn't, my, my father had no money. Like he was working his, whatever. He was working very hard. Right. And, but he just didn't have any money. He was not generating any, any, I'm not going to say wealth. He never owned his own house. And, he was driving car service and uh, there was times that my, my sisters got sent home from school because he didn't have tuition. Wow. And the, the boys, me, they never sent home because Haider is Bittl Toira, they don't send home the boys, but all these must meet them, like after school special, I couldn't go. And then camp, camp came around and until I got my Antret Kartel. At, and Your what? Like, an Antret Kartel, like a card, like a ticket to okay. be able to go was also like, uh-huh. until the last minute I didn't get it because my father, didn't come to an agreement with the Hanula and electricity. They would, they would, they would. I remember times that they would knock off our electricity. We would take a big orange extension cord from the neighbor just to plug in the refrigerator, the air conditioning, whatever we needed, the necessities. So I, I, I come from very humble beginnings and I was also very overweight. So I was always like to clap. I, I always stuck up for myself. I didn't take anything from anybody. <laughs> But it was always like a like a tseklapt kite. I don't know how you say tseklapt. I don't know what that, you're saying. A lot of words. I'm like, that's a great word. I don't know what it means. <laughs> it sounds good. It sounds good. Uh, the t- what's the ticket word again? Uh, Antretkart. Yeah, great. Well, I don't know. One of my top five Yiddish words at this point. <laughs> we'll be right back to this week's episode. But first, I want to talk to you about a good opportunity. And you know what? A great opportunity for you and your family. Okay, it's graduation time. So that means that you're finishing school, most probably, if you're in high school or whatnot. And you're like, hey, what am I going to do this summer? Or what am I going to do with my career? That's where Encore LBA comes in. If you want to get involved in the workforce and you want to feel good about what you do, you want to help people, specifically people that that need the help, people with children with autism. Well, that's where Encore LBA comes in. They are a wonderful company. I looked into them. They're great. And you know who really likes them? The people who use them. But you know who also really likes them? the people who work there. And that's a really good indication because that means they're doing something good because they really care about the people they help and they care about the people who work for them because you know what? It's kind of like a family. And you can't really say that if you're them, but I'm not them and I'm a third party. And I can say, and look at them and I say like, hey, this is like a family structure. They really care about what they're doing. So if you have no experience, but you want to get trained in it and you want to get paid and you want to help people, go ahead and you can check out Encore LBA. Uh, in the show notes, you can give them a call or you can send them an email. I will say that at the end of this ad read, what how to contact them or you can check in the show notes. But you also may be saying, hey, I have a child with autism or I know someone with autism that could use the help. Encore LB takes so many insurances. They take Medicaid and they really, 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 really care. So go ahead and reach out because you know you may be getting services and 
It could be better, and it probably could be. So check out Encore LBA. You could give them a call at 855-411-2273, or you could go to the website, EncoreSupport.org, or send them an email, info at EncoreSupport.org. So whether you have a child with autism or you are looking to further career because, you know what, maybe you're a BCBA or a behavior technician, or you have no experience, and you're like, I want to get involved with a company that really cares about me, and I could really make an impact on the world. Check out Encore LBA. Now back to this week's episode with the one, the only Schmilly. I didn't know that that you came from a background where I guess there was a very big financial struggle. Yeah. Did yeah. did you hop in the moment or looking back, you're like, wait a second. No, no, that- we we hopped at the moment. Mm-hmm. I, I was always having like we went to the grocery, but London's grocery and we had a bill of five hundred dollars. And uh, then in the by the cleaners we had a bill and we had bills all over the place, and I would always think to myself, like, uh, we have five hundred dollars for the grocery and two hundred dollars for the for the cleaner. So all in all, Daddy has chovers of fifteen hundred dollars. Like, oh my gosh, what is he gonna do? And then my mother would send me to the grocery with a five dollar bill, and I would get change, uh, fifty cents. And I was thinking to myself, should I buy myself something or should I not buy myself something? And I would always think to myself, no, this is the 50 cents. I, I don't want there should be a matzah where my father should say, I have enough money to buy a house, but it's missing me 50 cents. I don't want to be the cause of that. Wow. So I brought him, like, yeah, this is my thought process, right? It's very difficult for a child to be in that position, to be like so conscious of. Yeah, I was, I don't know. It wasn't my business, but it was, it was in the ear. It was always there that, you know, we don't have any money. What are we doing with money? Money, money, money. You know, my father didn't have a car. So, so, so Peter, he would rent a car and from like a month before Peter, we were busy. We're going to get a minivan. We're going to drive around and, and the Chalamoid, we're going to rent a car for Chalamoid. My father loved to go out with us, spend family time, but he didn't have a car. So Chalamoid, he rented a car and Peter, we, 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 we rented a car. So it was like a very big deal that he has a car, never had a cell phone, but he was, you know, he was so hardworking. He was up five o'clock in the morning. He didn't come home until eight, nine o'clock at night. But he just didn't have a tzlocha. I don't know mm-hmm. what to say. Did did you like swear off? Not swear off. I can't make another. But like, did you promise off that like when I'm older, I'm going to make sure that I have money? Or like, no, you're like, okay, listen, I dealt with the worst of the financial situations. It's not that bad. Or, I, I never sweat. thought, I never thought that I'll be earning a nice living. Never. So when, when, when people ask me to define success, what is success? Yeah, what is success? So I, <laughs> <laughs> so I always think, did you think that you're going to be, no, no matter what, let's say I'm making $50,000 a year. My father didn't make that money. If you were to tell me that you're going to be making $50,000 a year and now you're making it and and you never thought you're going to be making this money, that's success, right? You're saying getting anywhere further in life than you ever anticipated. Exactly, yes, yes. I never anticipated that I'll I'll be a singer. You know, people ask me, was it always your dream to become a singer? And the answer is no, it wasn't my dream. But lately, I I figured out that it, it was my dream. It was, it, it for sure it was my dream. I always loved to sing. But it was so, so far-fetched for me that I, I didn't even dare go there. Mm. So it's not a dream. It's nothing. Like, I, I never even thought about it. That's why I always thought it was never my dream. But I think it was my dream. I was just too afraid to even tap into it. Do you think people do that often? Like, they have this, like, deepest desires, but they're so mufka, they're so removed from there that they are like, I, I'll never end up there. Like, do you think a lot of people Absolutely. do that? Absolutely. And different kinds of fields and different kind of uh, mm-hmm. people for sure. Yeah, they're not even aware that that is really their dream. Interesting. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Do you, now that you, I guess, tapped into the dream, obviously there's always room, you mentioned it, to grow and do better, (laughs) but do you like look at like what you have and be like, I don't know if you're like the most blessed person? Absolutely. Super duper grateful for sure. Every day, every day in the morning, uh, you know, I wake up and... I, I'm not always uh, 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 naturally in a good mood and I have to put myself in a good mood just like everybody else and I have a lot of things to be grateful for, for sure. I'm very blessed, very, very blessed. So I, I want to talk about two things that that I, I'm, I assume both were a struggle for you um, and you could talk as much about it that you want or as little about it, but you mentioned like your first marriage. So you were married and you got, to, like how long were you married for? So we were married... We were living together for like two months Mm -hmm. and then we were separated for i think uh, maybe four months Mm -hmm. and then i got divorced so i i'm from the you know flappish crowd and 
there's i think in the world in the world there's some form of taboo with divorce and then mm -hmm. if you come to let's say a a flappish home divorce is more taboo and then in the hasidish world divorce is even more taboo mm -hmm. Um, we don't have to get into like the nitty gritty of like why you got divorced and it's none of my business and no one's business, but like, was it difficult for you to just, I guess, be married and then get divorced from the Hasidish background that you're in? It was very difficult. I, wa I was so upset when, when it hit me. Yeah. Did you toy back and forth of like, for sure, maybe I'll make it work. And then you're yeah. like, I can't make this work. At the moment when I was faced that I have to make this decision, I, I went nuts. It was at the time that I was, I wanted to become a singer. I had a few weddings here and there. I was part of a choir. And like you said, getting divorced was taboo. And I, I was sure that I'm gonna get divorced. I'm gonna be like this divorce guy. Nobody's gonna book me. Nobody's gonna be wanna be affiliated with me. And I was so upset because I had such a colorful life until I got married, mm -hmm. you know, until I found this shidduch and all this Bukharish union with my father passing away. And then, you know, the whole parsha, I, I thought to myself, really, I need this now. Right, yeah. But this, I was faced with this decision and, uh, and at one point it just I I, I got some I got like a, a, I had an epiphany or like I got clarity and mm -hmm. I knew I gotta I gotta make the call and I I, I want out and I I decided to, uh, I know I, I want to give a divorce wow yeah and I gave a divorce I remember I was working with a music producer Naftali Schnitzler mm -hmm. and I also I told him what is it gonna do to my career can I can I, you know do I need to stay married and he says Shmeli just divorce it, everything is gonna be fine it, you know it's crazy I didn't pers like. I did a little research about you before this because I do that for everyone. I didn't know you divorced until like I don't think it. I mean, I, what do I know? I don't think it affected your career at all. Like I, I, I didn't. Pink Fakirt, quite the contrary. It it gave me a lot of space, and then I went into Shira. If, um, ironically, my ex pushed me to go into Shira, but I think the time I went into Shira, I was separated and or getting divorced already. I remember one story. It was one of the Shabbos and Shraga Favel, the head calls me up. He says, there's a Shabbos, Shabbos Agudl or Shabbos Hanukkah, a program, doing a program. He's giving you free rooms. and But you have to sing Friday night if you want to do it. No money, just like a barter. And he was telling me that you can go, you know, Shuna uh, Rishona with your wife. <laughs> and I told him, I told him, no, I'm going through a divorce. I'm probably going to divorce her. And 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 he, he came up with a question like everybody was asking me, do you have kids? You have kids? And I didn't have any kids with her. And everybody was telling me, oh, you know, you got to thank Hashem for the kids. No kids. You have no idea how blessed you are. And I got so upset. Interesting. Why? Yeah, don't come and tell me how great God is to me now. All <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, a divorce is, is, is terrible. And, uh, you know, don't try to sugarcoat it. But the truth is, I just, I couldn't see it then. But the people outside could see it. Right. I just like I had a girlfriend for two months and then I divorced and I moved on. It didn't make, if I would have kids with her, it would be a whole different ballgame. Right, right. Maybe I wouldn't even divorce her because, you know, for the family. I don't know what I would end up doing. No, but it's a good point. Even even if if that's true that, you know, someone should be, could be grateful that like, hey, you didn't have kids. It could have changed a lot of dynamics. Mm -hmm. But in the moment, it's like when someone's like very, like, Let's say someone lost $10 million. You'd be like, at least you didn't lose $20 million. Yeah. Like, I don't, what, how's that helping me yeah. right now? Like, yeah. I'm focused on the hardship I'm going through. Like, yeah. your little advice isn't actually practically mm -hmm. helping me right now. Yeah. Or the mushal goes even further. Not, you could have lost $20 million. The mushal be, you, how can you be upset you lost $10 million? You know, this, your neighbor just crossed the road yesterday and he got cut off and he's in a coma. Right. You know, okay, so now I got to be grateful <laughs> because I didn't get killed. Right, you know? right. But still, the, the pain is still there. So as I was saying, so I got divorced then and Shira started using me and I was a good tool for Shira. I had a powerful voice and he could send me away for Shabusa. Right, you're a free agent. I, I'm a free agent. And I went to, to Toronto, I went to Montreal, to Los Angeles, Chicago. And I started flying around all over the place and seeing different people, different kind of music, different crowds, different cultures. And that gave me a lot of, a lot of uh, like the, the foundation of when I was gonna be started doing this on my own. That like I shouldn't be so so fremd. How do you say fremd in English? Uh, I don't know. Foreign. Mm -hmm. So I, I should like when I have I, I I I get a gig in Montreal. I should know what I'm getting myself into or fly flying to Los Angeles and seeing people. It it was a lot of eye openings for me. Flying, going to the airport, knowing how to get around. What 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 is, what does boarding mean and what does taking off mean and what security? All those I got to learn in the in my years of Shira. So I, I will always be grateful for that. Did you did you want to get married right away? No, or, no, no you needed like space. Yeah. So I like, just I remember gaining a lot of weight also. 
and that's the second thing I want to talk about struggle and like yeah, and I, and I, congratulations you lost a lot of weight now thank you, thank but you. it seemed like you mentioned before you were talking about when you were a kid it seemed like your weight has been a struggle for always, you always yeah my parents were both very big mm-hmm. my father and my mother and that also didn't add to the whole dynamic of being different and being exposed to Walmart the Kmart and that stuff my parents were very overweight so this like added on like yeah Shmudu with Unger you know the guy who wears Kmart clothing and his parents are like huge I mean every kid is embarrassed by their parents that's just normal right but but for me it was worse they were really big mm-hmm. so all of my my siblings were, were big and we were always struggling with weight did people make did people make fun of you that you were overweight probably okay but no I don't, but I, was... any, I don't have any core memories right, of somebody okay, okay. At least it shaming me because but... I could always take care of myself I, right. I always stuck up for myself and mm-hmm. you know I didn't I didn't I didn't just take it in the chin. right right interesting but you've always, I guess you've always been when you're stressed do you eat more is that like how it works yeah I was definitely stress eating and binge eating mm-hmm. and noshing and everything yeah right yeah right it's interesting so mm-hmm. I it's something that you mentioned before that I want to bring up is that I don't know when it's gonna be released if you the, the ready to release your podcast but you're coming out with the podcast nobody knows no really I haven't even, maybe I, I spoke to a few of my friends about it but not not in the public so, so. What, what's what's the reason behind it why would you want to do a podcast uh first of all I'm not I don't want to call it podcast because podcast everybody has a podcast yes right? that is true so I was very I was struggling with the name how should I call it the Schmilly show Schmilly program I, I went through a lot of names and we landed with Schmilly cast. Okay, I like that. I like that. You like it? Yeah, Shmuley Cast. Shmuley Cast. Yeah, so it's it's spelled Shmuley like I spell my name, Shmuley Cast, but I pronounce it Shmuley Cast, like I pronounce my name Yiddish Shmuley. Um, so I was always told my my sister is my sister is jolly. She loves to talk and she's a lot of fun. Always uh, she has a a kipka around her talking, and I I was always the same way. I. I, you know, it was good vibes around me, even yeshiva. I guess it was a, a, a defense mechanism. I always uh, resorted to, to to humor and to make fun, sar- sarcasm. Mm-hmm. And and people would always tell me, Shmili, you have to have your own show. You have to have your own show, like for years. But it's, it's like, it's nice to hear. And I didn't even put much focus. Like for somebody to say, I love how you sing and also how you dance. You know, you have nice dance moves. I think you should go to dance lessons. And, and and me going to actually take dance lessons, it, it would nothing do. It would do nothing for me. It was nice that people should tell me I dance nice, but focus on the singing. The same with the talking. It was it was nice to hear, but I was never gonna pursue it. And it just became it became more and more. And then uh, 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 the, all these groups on WhatsApp, I would leave uh, voice notes and talk politics, a lot of politics. But on the podcast, uh, on the show, you see, I don't like podcasts. On the show, I I I, I don't want to talk about politics. Maybe mm-hmm. I will talk, maybe not. But I have very strong opinions. So what is it? What it's it's a schmooze. Just schmoozing. Mm-hmm. So I have friends. It's also not about the music industry. Right. Right. But a lot of my friends are are singers or musicians. So I will have I will have a lot of guests from the music industry. But I want to call up people that fascinate me, people that excite me, people that have knowledge, uh, business people, people with uh, with who know who knows uh, history or geography, some interesting stuff, right. whatever. Interesting. Just have a talk with somebody, introduce them, and talk for two hours, and then put out uh, the show of forty five minutes. Like take out all the good pieces and but do it like that. Before I started the show, I was actually a little nervous from the rabbanim that they'll. I didn't think they'd hop what I was trying to do. Like, again, I wasn't doing anything so crazy, but like a new thing, a podcast, a show on YouTube. Like, I was a little worried. Thank God I, I didn't get really any pushback. But are but we come from a little of a different background. Are you, ner- I mean, put it out yet, but like, are you nervous that you'll get some form of pushback from the Rabbanim? I don't think so. No. Because I the, I had four Shmisen already till now. I did okay. three, which I'm probably never going to put out, but maybe I will. And One today... Day. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I said one day, one day, one day. One day. You never know. Never say never. But today I did my first official one. I have the nice background and I prepared my notes and and it was a good it was a good schmooze. Um well, I forgot what what were you asking? Uh, were worried saying? about pushback and stuff like that. Oh, uh, so for we those t- listening, this we're we're at it's 109 in the morning it's and really uh, drove yeah. in from Muncie, so it's forgive right. us for being so late. Yeah. <laughs> um so, so I talk a lot about God. I talk about uh, uh, you know Hashkofa and uh, like you said, this guy and Yiddish guy. Yiddish guy is not meant to you know be a boogeyman. It's right. really beautiful. We talk about his bodhidas and meditation and how you can get closer to God and how you can just enjoy life. So, I don't think there's gonna be pushback. And also, there's so much stuff out there like worse than me. 
Mm-hmm. I'm not going to mention any stuff, but you know, it's right. it's, yeah, it's yeah, quite yeah. not prost, but uh, provocative. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. so I'm I I, I have a, I have a, a nice standing in 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 the business where I am. People know who I am. I'm a Hasidic guy. I'm not talking, you know, no nivel pair, no lushan hara, no rechilas. We're just having a good time talking about life, talking about family, and you know, lo- talking about growing and learning. I learn from the people I, I interview, and and they learn from me. And whilst three cameras are on and letting the whole world share into our conversation. Okay, cool. Whenever it's available, I'll I'll put it into the show notes. Okay, we will be right back to this week's episode. And coming up is something really incredible. Wow, Shmuley, he's so he's so full of life and so happy and. He's gone through so many challenges and I I really look up to him. But first, let me tell you about an amazing podcast that you should be listening to if you haven't yet. Okay, so there's this fellow on Twitter named Rabbi Dr. Ari Lam. Clearly has a lot of credentials, two more than me. And he is fantastic. I mean, his tweets are amazing. And he has this really cool idea of taking things that are maybe on the surface boring and really making them interesting and something that he takes on a very academic but also fun way is the Bible, the Torah. And he has conversations with really interesting historians or people in pop culture, whoever it is, or just just Tamid al-Chacham, whoever it is, and really insightful look and takes out lessons from Torah portions or the Bible for modern day, for what you're going through. And I I think it's very fascinating what he does on the Good Faith Effort podcast. But more than that, um, he okay, so he brings on really good uh guests he also brings up really good topics but more than that he is someone that is so easy to listen to there's so many times you're listening to podcasts and the guest is amazing or the topic the subject is great but the the host stinks uh hopefully like me as a host but you i'm telling you listen to one episode of good faith effort you're gonna love ari lamb's personality he is so fun and and insightful and smart and really easy to listen to. So go ahead and check out Good Faith Effort Podcast, Apple, Spotify. Check out one episode. You'll go through all the all the the titles. Fascinating. Find one that speaks to you. They just did their hundredth episode, so clearly they know what they're doing. And I'm addicted to it. I really that's my veg. If I need to just like go on a long drive and just space out, but I actually learn a lot, um, but in a fun way. I listen to Good Faith Effort. So go ahead and check them out. We love them and. Now, okay, right before we get back to this episode, I, I, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. But particularly with this episode, we're talking to Shmuley. And he's going through so many challenges in his life. How many times do you go through your life and you're like going through a challenge and you could use the help and support from someone else? Well, Simcha time, there's someone named Simcha Belsky. He went ahead and went out of his way, no matter what, to go and help people. A lot of times people he did not know, but you know what? They needed help. So we're doing this mission where you're going to go ahead this week. Yes, you listening to this in the car as you eat tradition soup or not, (laughs) but you're going to you're going to go ahead and do a chesed. Go out of your way to help someone else in need. It could be someone you know. It could be someone you don't know. It doesn't make a difference. We want to honor Simcha's memory and 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 bring to life everything that he did and just just continue it really continue it and uh if you do something like that you could go to simchatime.org and share the chesed that you did but it doesn't end there because doing a chesed sometimes sometimes it's private but you know what we also want other people to do it so by your shabbos table you're gonna sit around and you're gonna talk and discuss about what you did that week and you're gonna say hey shlimey what was your simcha time and i'll be like oh it's so crazy i i was going from from the five towns to brooklyn and someone's like hey because i didn't go to bar bar and i was going to flatbush and i was going to bar bar it was actually like 15 20 minutes but you know what they need this package for this person they just needed it and you know what i was going there and okay 15 20 minutes out of my way and 20 minutes back to help another person out i'm gonna do it so that's what simple time is you go around and you discuss it I promise you, and I don't promise often, it will change your life. It will make you feel better and you'll help other people. So go ahead and do this simple time. Now, back to this week's episode, which Millie, I'm so excited. Get ready, get ready for this moment. I just want to go back to your your singing for, for a second. You seem very, very knowledgeable at like music itself. Like sometimes you have singers, they have a good voice and they have a good voice, but like you seem to like understand the art of music as well, very well. Do you ever like come across a singer that you're like, like, I don't like exactly how they're doing that or they could be doing that better. Uh, 
Uh, first of all, I, I think I, I must disagree. I don't think I'm very like no? musical. No, I, I don't think so. I mean, maybe I'm so not musical. So like I come to you. I hear. Really? No, in, in the musical world, I you know, there's major and minor. I, I don't know really the difference between major and minor. Interesting. You know, this this could be embarrassing to say, but I'm not embarrassed because I, I do what I do. I'm good at it. I just don't know, you know, music theory and I don't play play any instruments. I'm just a good vocalist. And oh, when somebody asks me, what do you do for a living? Like, what is it that I do? I don't say I'm a singer. I say I'm, I'm in entertainment. Because when I go up on stage, yes, I sing. But eventually, e even now, when I do weddings, were you from the beginning of the wedding or you just came for the dancing by Hecht? Um, I came by the chuppah. Okay, so you were there by the meal? You, yeah, I was there by the meal. Okay, so I don't know if you remember. So when I started I was singing, schmoozing with like the, every celebrity in the world yeah, was there. Yeah, like every big, was there. Jay all the Rabbanim were there. Like yeah. it was a big wedding. It was a special wedding. So, so during the meal. So when I start singing by the meal, before I start singing, the music starts playing. I say, Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov. And I say, Mazel Tov for the Chuzinkala, Mazel Tov Mishpachas Hecht, Mazel Tov Mishpachas Friedrich. I just, I, I, I like warm up the crowd this is like it's something very out of the box from the Hasidic community but right. the Hasidic community you just start singing blah, blah, blah. so i talk i like to mix it up i know and eventually maybe i'll be telling stories maybe i'll do comedy but i consider myself being somebody in the entertainment um, business not so i mean i do it through singing but there's more like you said there's a big there's a lack there's hunger for more entertainment and I think I can fill that void one way or another. I'm doing this podcast. Maybe it's going to be spin-offs. Maybe I'm going to get different ideas, find different people. You understand? Right. There's room to grow. So that's what I'm You'll doing. You'll grow the Shmiliverse. Mm. It's a sham. So I, I, I like to ask all my guests these. I, I think they're fun questions. So my first question is, is there a mitzvah out of the 630 mitzvahs that is more dear to you than the others? That's a good question. That's a good question. Is it? There's 613 um, from the Torah Shabbik Sav, but there's way more mitzvahs from the Rabunan, right? I think so, yeah. That makes so sense. What, what comes to mind for me is the Hanukkah Lechtlech. When mm -hmm. I sit with my family, it's, you know, with the whole Hanukkah vibe is really special. I guess it's like nostalgic to me. And, and just having my wife and my two kids by the Manoira, it's the most beautiful thing. You mentioned before your kids are twins. Yes, they are twins. So I just had a baby last week. Mazel tov, thank you, mazel thank you. Tov, yes. I, I can't imagine what it's like to have, I just had a baby, but like two of those at mm. the same time. You have a boy and a girl? A boy and a girl. You can't imagine. I'm telling you now. You Like I have a friend imagine. that has triplets and anytime anything's like, my what? My baby, like... I don't want to hear about it. Yeah, I'm, I always say my friend Mayor Whitman has triplets. Like yeah. I, I can't. How could I ever complain? Right. But two, two is also it's it's, it's not easy. Lot. It's a lot. And also they weren't. They were born early. They were ah, born after 26 weeks. That is very early. Is very early. Yeah, they were miracle babies. Wow. Uh, I can show you pictures. They were like, my daughter was not, was uh, uh, like a thousand grams, and my son was 950 grams. Uh, the, the other terms, my daughter was was two pounds one ounce wow. and my son was one pound and nine ounces that's insane very small yeah and also hold on also you're like a tall guy like imagine <laughs> like you holding them yeah when i hold them from afar it looked like a pimple right <laughs> but they, they, they were scary dangerously uh, wow uh, uh, you know close to not making it they were in the nicu for like my son was there for three months and my daughter for four months wow yeah, and like my son had a spit in a ban and he wasn't even there. How pathetic, right? It was it's it, very it is, sad. It is what it is. But I, I can imagine you at that point, you're like, okay, my father died when I was young. I got divorced. Yeah. I was struggling with this and that. Now another thing, right. another thing to... I think it's sometimes, but I don't dwell on it. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't look at myself like as a victim, as somebody who suffers all the time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yeah, it was what it was. It was very hard. They were born, like I said, they just turned four. Their, their, their birthday is Kuvbais Udir. Hmm. It was on a Friday. It was like Mamish right after Pirim. And, and it was, it was, it was so chaos. My wife went into labor after 24 weeks. And, and, and the doctor, we, we went to Dr. Ray Barber, a very big doctor from Mount Sinai. He was referred to us from the beginning that he should be our doctor, but we didn't we ended up in a different practice and they they didn't treat us nice they didn't treat us good they they 
they wanted to do experiments. That's what really? they wanted to do, yes. Interesting. So, yeah, Mama Shazoi, and like they let my wife fly. It was a high, a high pregnancy, a high, high risk pregnancy right. because it's twins and it's the first. And, but they let her travel to Los Angeles, the, on a six hour flight. Maybe she shouldn't have gone. And then when she came back and she felt different, they weren't like too much focused on her problems. They were more focused on some study they're doing and if they can test it and blah, blah, blah. Really? Yeah. That's wild. That's very wild. Anyway, and then she went, mamish into labor and she, there was a big problem. And then we, we decided to quit that practice and we wanted to go to Dr. Rebarber to, to, to save it. And he wanted a really big amount of money. He never takes patients that come low. Have, don't, don't come to me now. Now right, you want right. me to save you. Right. But he was nice enough and he took us in and he said, we got to push it at least 27 or 28 weeks. If you we can push it to there, we will be good. And Lamar said she pushed it 26 weeks and six days. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, but Burr Hashem, my son is, you know, is a man's man. <laughs> and he learns and he's so smart. He's Gavaldic. My daughter is a little bit not catching up mm -hmm. so fast. Mm -hmm. But she's there, you know, she's so cute and wouldn't give her up for anything in the world. That's amazing. But what you're saying, it was very, very besides that they're twins, they were, they were preemies mm -hmm. and it was very difficult. And then we had a nanny and people think, oh, he has a nanny. Segai Tamgit, he has a nanny. <laughs> but the truth is that then we had three babies. We had to take care of the children and then we had to take care of the nanny, where she's going to sleep and when she's going to sleep and how we want it done because she did things her way and we want, we did things that we, what we wanted to do. So, so Juggling three three people. Mama Shazoi. But what Hashem now if, we're here. If there was one person from history or one person that passed away recently that you could spend an hour with, who would you spend that hour with? That's a good question. Somebody asked me this question. If you can have somebody at your Shabbos table. Yeah, or the the the, the newspaper? Yes, the newspaper. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I, I never read I never read that paper, but I remember him coming. Uh, Jewish views. Jewish views. They give it out for free. I think it's about yeah, advertisement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so for him, I I said Duva mm Damelech, -hmm. but I remember like for even weeks after he asked me that question, I always thought, why did I say Duva Damelech? Why Duva Damelech? Why Duva <laughs> I don't know. It just came to me. But now that you're asking, somebody from the past or somebody from from the recent past, you could do either. You could do either. I'm thinking my father. Yeah. I would want to spend an hour with my father. I have so many questions. Like, I thought I knew him because I was 14 years old, but as I'm growing older, I, I realize how, how, how not, how, how I didn't know him. There's mm -hmm. no way I could know him, right? Right. I just have my perception of him. So that would be nice. I have a few questions I would like to ask him. That's fair. So I would, I would pick my father. That's nice. That's very nice. What's, um, What's a time that someone did a chesed for you or you did a chesed for someone? I ask because we're doing this whole thing with Simcha time, Simcha Belsky, El Avasham passed away and he was someone who just went out and did chesed for people. So is, what's the time that you did a chesed or someone did a chesed for you, maybe recently or whatever it was that like made a very big impact? Um, so I, I want to get the story right because it happened, it happened years ago. Um, so my, I have one brother, I have two sisters and a brother, a younger brother. He, just like me, he didn't have an easy childhood. He, he had it even worse because he was 11 when my father passed away mm -hmm. and I was 14. So I, I kind of had it figured out. I was, I was, I was old enough to, to start on my own. He was just right at that time that he really needed a father and he wasn't grown up yet. So, you know, this whole Yasmus thing really hit him way harder than me. And he, 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 he told me that he used to always take hitches, take a hitch, a tramp, how do you call it? A hitch. A hitch, English. yeah, yeah. And in the winter and the summer, and, and when he was waiting for a hitch, he, he told me that he, he said to himself, if, when I'm going to grow older, I'm going to have my own car, I will always give hitches for people. It's mm. my promise to you. And if, I, if I'm going to get a car, I'm always going to give hitches. This is one part of the story. The second part of the story is I was I was divorced for three years, and then then it was time for me to start looking for a shidduch, and uh, uh, I called up Shatchunam, and uh, I, I I would tell them what I'm looking for, what my age is, and uh, that I don't want I don't want a a, 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 a woman with kids. I, I don't think I I need to take a woman with kids. I, I've, I'm not I'm only 23, 24 years old. And the one a Hasidish, blah, blah, blah. I had my things and I would call up a Shatchan and I would tell them, I, I give you $10,000, bring me a Shidduch. 
because money talks mm-hmm. money talks if you promise them money it's it's not this is how the world works right? right you know everybody wants to do favors i'm looking out for you if you promise them money it, it is also brought down sperm like shadchan is, is a real thing like there's a, like a there's 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 a big thing behind it giving them i, I heard a whole share on it i, can't, uh-huh. I don't remember it but there's like there's a real thing there with like uh-huh. offering money there's precedent you say. yeah no like it, yeah yeah exactly so I don't know how, how I figured it out. And I told Shatchunam, people would call me. I didn't even know their names. I told them, I don't know who you are. If you deliver me a shidduch, there's $10,000 waiting for you. And one of the nights I got, I get a call from somebody and and he asked me if I would do a shidduch, this and this uh, a lady. I, I just want to remember it correctly, perfectly. So... I told him, yeah, she, um, she's like 24 years old, has no kids. She's divorced herself, lives in Williamsburg. It sounded all very nice. So just get me a picture and set up a date. I don't need any real information. I just want to see if there's chemistry, if there's something even to go further. Like some mm. people gather information and information. I don't care about information. If I like her, if I have, you know, if we have good energy, mm-hmm. we take it further. Then I'll ask information. Right, right, right. Um, so we set it up and I went out with her and Lamasa, the shidduch happened, I, I became engaged. And the shatchan tells me that you should know, uh, like uh, six months ago, I read, that's how you say, I read this shidduch to <laughs> your, to the mechitainist, to, to my, mo- my mother-in-law. And she said, no, the singer, I'm not looking for that. No, next, no, not interesting. And he was learning with a, a boy, Bechavrisa, and 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 the this boy the Chavrisa knew me from singing and he says oh Shmili Ungar this that that nothing ever happened. Uh, so where do I go from here? I want to get to the chesed part. So my brother he had his car, and he was working. He's a chef now. He's doing salesman, but when he was younger, he wanted to be a chef. He always had a passion for cooking, and he was working in the mountains in a restaurant. And it was one day he left the restaurant and he was heading home back to Monroe, back from the Catskills, from exit 107, back to exit 130, going down all the way. And he, since he made this promise to God that he will always give hitches, he was signed up to a lot of groups, a lot of chesed groups. Mm-hmm. And he was, it was after a long day of work, he was driving home and he was almost like, he was mo- for, more towards Monroe than it was in the mountains. And he gets a call from... Lechairis. Lechairis is an organization who helps people. And and he they're telling him that there's a, a father needs to go. His, his, his son or his daughter had an accident and they went with a chopper to a hospital. And the father needs a ride from his bungalow colony to the hospital. And he asks, where, from what, what's, the, what's the exit? Like, what is it, 120, one, you know, uh, 115? He says, no, it's exit 100, like way wow. back up. Yeah, it's far. And he says, you know, I'm almost a mono, I'm, I'm, I have no koyach. If you have somebody else, try to get somebody else. And they said, okay, let's try somebody else. And then he went further home and then they called him back 10 minutes later. There's nobody else. Do you want to do it? And he says, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm turning around, it made a U-turn, and he went up to that bungalow colony, and he gets there, and he picks up this guy, and the guy is very, like, his son was in an accident, he's going to the hospital, he was very shaken up, and they're, they're in the car sitting together, my brother is driving him to the hospital, and they start making conversation. So I was already 25, my brother was is three years younger, so he was like maybe 22, 23, and he was looking for shidduch for himself, he was still a bucher, I was divorced, and he was a bucher. And and this guy starts asking him, what's your name? So he says, my name is Shula Mungar. And, oh, so you're related to a singer, Shmili, Shmili Ungar? And he says, yeah, it's my brother. And this guy starts asking him questions about me. And my brother gets annoyed because, you know, he was always in, in, in the shadow of me. And, you know, he says, I, I need a shidduch. Why are you asking information on my brother? <laughs> But he kept it to himself and, and, and he, he gave good information on me. He said, my brother is such a good guy and uh, people just know him from singing, but I know him as my brother. And he gave, he just spoke from his heart. Wow. And and this guy turned out to be the Shatchan who called me. So six months after that, my mother-in-law told him no, he got like not the best information. He's a singer from his Chavrisa. He didn't pursue it. And then he got a hitch from this, this guy. He was told that this guy, my brother was already almost a Monroe. And he turned around because he wants to pick you up. He's going to do this chesed with you. 
And so if this guy is such a good guy, his brother can't be so far bad off. <laughs> so after he got to the hospital, he, 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 he asked my brother for my number and he called me and I told him the whole speech again. I told him, yeah, this and this is what I'm looking for. And he again, he read that same shit that he says, what do you think of this? I asked for a picture, blah, blah, blah. And at that point, my mother-in-law was Moscow. I don't know why. It was six months later. And we went out and this is how the shit happened. Wow. This is how the shit happened. So because of my brother decided to turn around and do this case for the- That's amazing. Hold on. Right? I have to point out, okay, I assume you paid the shot and uh, yeah, good I money. Yeah. I feel like Shalomonger should get something out of this. I think he should get a little commission. I hear, Maybe I a little, not, not all of it, but he, he, he had a big effect on it. But I'm sure he's very happy for you guys. Yes. He's married also. He just had his baby. He's, oh, wow. Well, yeah, he's doing fine for himself. Okay, and good. we do help each other out. Right, you know? right, right, right. Very beautiful. Um, before I ask my second to last question, I just want to, is there any thing coming up music wise? Like you always, I see by weddings, concerts, anything about the music industry that you want to talk about? Like, I, I know we've been talking about a lot of stuff. I'm like, you're a singer. Like there's, there's probably a lot of music stuff that, that didn't come up that, okay, we don't have seven hours here, but. So there's always, always stuff in the making. I'm always listening to new material, to new songs, and listening to new composers, new talent. And uh, so there's always work. Either I'm writing down what I need to do, or I'm writing down songs that I've heard that I, I want to go after, I want to lock it in. Then there's the album. I'm, I want to re release an album. But before the album, you can put out singles and put out live videos from gigs. You do weddings, you can do a nice song, you put out a video. Which I want to interrupt. I, I think you have one of like the most catchy what i think one of the most successful jewish music videos the song Mach 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 Bracha. Bracha. Bracha i just crazy. looked up before like you're about to hit nine million views mm -hmm. which is crazy but it's so nice. i mean mayor k is a good friend of mine it, it's oh, so you're friends with him yeah, he yeah, doesn't yeah. do it anymore he doesn't do videos. yeah he does like the breathing, breathing stuff now stuff. yeah exactly his status huh? yeah we're good friends we keep up he, yeah he's, he's, a, he's a good vibe but it was it was such a it was first of all it's such a catchy song it's so good like mm. sometimes it gets stuck like i can't get it out of my head i'm not exaggerating uh, but it's so well done it was yes. it was so good it was all his idea i remember it cost a lot of, a lot of money the video but it's done really well it's yeah it did it did it did good for me it did a lot of good for me right from, uh, from the 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 five towns community the the syrian community the the modern community i got my name very very much out there yeah besides the hasidic community so it did well so yeah, so that's a music video. That's not a video that I did on a live a gig. Right, like, right, right. Like a cover of a song. So right now, in the last three months, I put out three songs. I have a, a duet with Baruch Levine. Yeah, I saw it was 24 Sex, the biggest uh, yes, song there now. It's not number one number trending, one. yes. Yeah. So it's a, such a good song. Baruch Levine called me up and he actually was Danny Gross. I, no, it was Baruch Levine. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, you know me through Donnie, right? Donnie gave you my number. Yes, That's what he told I me. asked Donnie. I asked yeah. Donnie. I'm like, is he the type? He's like, yes, you could have, like, go for it. He's a geschmack guy. Donnie, he's great. Right? He's great. He's great. He's very light, very, he's good. Very good. Anyway, so, so, so Baruch asked me if I would do a duet with him. I told him, let me hear this song, but I'm always open for, for if it's a good song, why not? And he sent me the song and it was so good. I told him, Baruch, maybe we, I take it for my album and you, <laughs> you'll be a guest on my CD. But he didn't go for it. It was, it was worth a shot. So that was released just now after Piram, the CD came out. And then I did a song with Mad Dob, with, with Barry Weber, Eftach Bach. Vani, Eftach Bach. I'm sure you heard the yeah, song. Yeah, we did course. it by Hecht Wedding. We did, we yeah. did a big avoid from that song. <laughs> and then I did a song with Mandy Hashkowitz's band, Bekarev Mamish. That was like... Uh, not a music video, but it was like very casual video of me walking around and getting the, and getting a phone call from Hershey, the composer of the song, asking me if I want to do this song and where I am, where he's composing and how it's all coming together until we get, go to the studio, we make a nice video of it. So this is three songs I released in the last two, three months. But I am working on an album. I'm gathering songs. I have a lot of nice geschmack, good songs. Hopefully, I don't know if I'm kidding myself, but I really want to be out for the end of the summer, maybe Chameshusir Be'uv or in that area. Um, I, I made a few changes just now after 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 sickness. I made a few changes. Uh, one with the weight loss. I've been losing this weight for more than a year now, yeah. and uh, with a with a podcast I'm opening, and also with my musical career, I was with uh, with a producer, Naftali Schnitzer, super fantastic, talented guy. 
and I'm very grateful for him. And we did a lot of good music. What I realized is, you heard of Yochi Briskman for sure. Sure. So Yochi Briskman put out a lot of albums with Baruch Levine, Simcha Liner, Yaakov Shweki, and somehow it all had the same sound. And then there's Yitzi Waldner putting out CDs with Uri Davidi, Moshe Tischler, and uh, Mordechai Shapiro. And it's also having the same sound. And then Naftali Schnitzer, the guy I worked with, he put out CDs with uh, Betty Weber, Yoli Greenfeld, and, and it was also a very Naftali sound. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I was just at a point of my in my life that I want to find my own sound. Mm. Let me see what it's all about. And he made it so comfortable for me. He had a studio set up. He helped me with the with the song selection for a singer to 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 you know to be to grow. He needs to have hits. He needs to have songs that people love and people enjoy and people request. If you don't have hits, you know it's 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 harder work. Right. So I, I chose my own songs, but that the, the, it, 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 he had a commercial ear. He know he knew what's gonna go at weddings, what people are gonna pick up. You know, Bari Lua, Amri You know, mm -hmm. we did it over there. So he helped me a lot and made it very comfortable for me. I didn't have to lift a finger. And but so now I'm doing this on my own, and I'm keep on running into different uh, difficulties and. I'm starting to see, you know, to see it's not so easy working with this uh, arranger, with that arranger, and how is this going to come together, and who's going to tell me which song I should start the album with, and how many tracks I should have, all these questions. So I'm figuring it out as I'm going, and uh, Danny Gross is a good option. Then there's Mandy Heshkowitz, also a good option. There's uh, Yossi Tiberg, University Tiberg, yeah, also. Yeah, sure. Moshi Kroos, Amano. Then there's in Israel, you have Yitzi Berry and Yoli Klein, uh, Eli Klein working together. So there's a lot of different options. And you, one who has a music career for 20 years, you see from their first album to their the last album that they did, there's so much in between yeah. that they shift and they change. And that's mm -hmm. fine. It's 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 that's like life. It is. You, that's how yeah, it works. Yeah, yeah, everything's always changing. And mm -hmm. if you stay the same and do the same exact thing every time. There's no growth. There's yeah. no excitement. Right. You, know, you get bored, you get, you get burnt right. out. Is there a story that that inspires you that either happened to you in your life or that you hear you've heard it and you're like wow that gives me a lot of chizek yes there is you know and i wanted to make a song of it but then i was told that, there, that there's already a song from it from Jonas and schwarz you heard of Jonas and schwarz I've heard of him but i'm oh. not sure which song you're referring to so when i was going through the divorce right when it happened right when i saw like oh my god what did i get myself into like in the beginning of the separation excuse me so I was I was devastated, and yeah, I I didn't know what hit me. I was like, Mamish, a newly a newly married guy, and my grandfather, and my uncle, they helped me get married, and they paid so much money for everything, and I'm finally married. I'm not a usum anymore. I'm not single. I have a wife, and now this is coming up. I was shattered, and um, we were. I were. I remember I was in an ambulance for whatever reasons. I was sitting in the ambulance going up to a hospital, and I was on the phone with a good friend of mine, his name is uh, Matas Bilir. He's a Malama de Minkach. And we were talking on the phone and he tells me a story. He tells me, also I wanna get this trip because I didn't I didn't hear the story or repeat it since, since uh, 2012, whenever it happened. 11 years ago, wow, it's been 11 years. Yeah. So he tells me this, uh, this guy gets, he dies and he gets to, to Shemayim and uh, and all the books are opened up for him. He can see his whole life, whatever wherever he went, and he sees he sees the whole life he went through, all the all the ups and all the downs, and and he's looking at it and he's so fascinated. And then he starts looking deeper, like zooming in, and he sees that the whole journey there's two sets of footprints, you know, being born and and going through the struggles and everything. So he asked Hashem, what is this, this two um, 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 footprints? What is this? Who is this? And Hashem is telling him, you know, this is this one set of footsteps is yours and the other one is mine. I was with you the whole journey of your life. I was every step of the way. And then the, the, the Yid is looking in and he sees by all these hard places, there's only one set of footprints. And he says, Hashem, how could you do this? You know, all these hard places, you left me by myself. And Hashem says, no, no, my son, you don't understand. All these hard places, the one set of footprints you see is my footsteps because by the hard places, I picked you up on my shoulder mm. and, and the footsteps you're seeing is my footsteps. 
So you heard the story already before? I, Rav Gav, on uh, Eretz Yisrael, he said it, he said it. So I got to tell you, very nice of you to just to sit through it and, you know, let me no, finish. First of all, the people listening, I'm sure a lot of them <laughs> right. have not. What, what would you do if this is a joke? If there's a punchline and you heard the joke already and you're thinking he's going to end the joke and I'm going to have to pretend to laugh, what would you do? On this podcast, I would pretend to laugh. In you're real life, if I was close to the person, I'd say, I heard this already. And if I didn't know the person, I would listen. <laughs> and I like, I chuckle funny anyway so this 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 story even now just by telling it I, i'm a little bit choking up at uh, i don't know this this story means a lot to me wow wow and, and to hear it at that point in your life yeah it was really helpful but i i, re- I repeated it to somebody afterwards and he says that this mushal stumps from a galach i so i didn't want to i didn't there you go i didn't know if i should say it that far <laughs> that it's it's so, it's a famous christian story uh, or whatever mushal but I, I don't think that makes a difference. Like, who cares? It's right. such a nice idea. Yeah. Okay, fine. So it's it's from another religion. And 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 the same idea of like Hashem or God, like he's yeah. there with you in the, the toughest moment. The concept is good. The point is it's good. It's such a nice, it's it's very nice. So I, I don't. But if the Makar is from Tim, you don't know. But then again, you know, even the Makar Tim is also from God. God made everything, yeah. everything, right? So I, I, If I hear it and it could give me chizik and I don't see any reason why it should do anything bad like just because if it's from a bad macabre. yeah whatever it is different places different people different things hmm. it, for, i'm going to end off with this for someone listening or watching that they're going through a tough time in life what advice would you give them that nothing is forever nothing lasts forever and uh unfortunately even good times don't last forever but you know you focus on the good things and if something is not going right in your life it's not going to stay like that it's I'm not saying it's going to get easier, but it's going to get better. Like right when I lost my father, I didn't like the whole concept of, oh, he's a Yusim. You know, Davi, I saw him and we have a special play. I didn't want to hear about that. I was very good. My father passed away. I'm not an orphan. I'm just a guy who doesn't have, uh, you know, parent, a, a parent. I'm missing a parent. But, and, and I have a friend. His name is Yankee Katz. He's a writer. And he wrote an article in a, in a Yiddish magazine about Yasmas. And he, he wrote how difficult it is and how much compassion you should have for those families. And I told him, why, why would you do that? You're making such a, such, why, why do you make it like they're suffering? And it, it's not so bad, like it's okay. And he tells me, he tells me, Shmili, I, I don't expect to hear from you or something else, but you're going to get older and you're going to know. And that's true. I'm getting older. And the older I'm getting, the more I, I miss my father. You understand? Mm. Like, I'm always thinking, I'm 32, so my father was 32. My father passed away when he was 37. So when he was 32, I was in Kita High, and I went to him with, she, and by, by me, when I was in Kita High, my father was like my hero, my everything, and he, he knew all the directions without a GPS, and he knew how to drive, and he was my guy. Mm. But in real life, he was just a 32-year-old figuring it out for himself, also growing up together with me. And so as I'm getting older, I'm always comparing where my father was and how, how I'm looking at my son and what my father would tell me. And the more I think about it, the more I miss him. The older you get, the more you find mm. out like what, what you're missing. I could have had a father. Wow. So, so my advice is if it's, if it's rough, it won't last forever. And the best is yet to come. That's what I always say. The okay. best is yet to come. Shmili Younger, thank you. And I don't know if I said your name correctly. Yeah, it's nice. You said it thank good. you so much for coming here and doing this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Yaakov. And, uh, you know, may, may it bring a kiddush Hashem. And we never know who is going to listen to it or when people are going to listen to it. But you never know. You know, we do. We got to do what we got to do. And shlach lach mechol alamayim. Whatever happens, happens. Whatever happens, happens. Shkayach. Aledikt. Good night. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this week's episode. If you got this far in the episode, I want you to comment a Yiddish word. I think it's Yiddish. The word is geschmack. It means great. I think it means great. Comment the word geschmack. I don't even know how to spell it. Spell it however you would spell it. Go ahead and spell it on YouTube. I look out for these comments and I like it and I'm going to reply to it, every single one. So go ahead and, and leave that note so I know that you got this far in this episode. So thank you. Firstly, go ahead and check out the Good Faith Effort podcast. You could see the link in the show notes. Go ahead and check out Encore LBA. They're really wonderful. They're great at what they do and you can change your life, your career if you go ahead and join them or you may need their services and also go ahead and do a simple time. Please, you've heard me 
talking about it, go ahead and do one chesed. What, it, it's not that hard. You could do it. Go ahead and rate this show five stars on Apple or Spotify, wherever you listen to the show. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube. Till next time. Oh, also, share this episode with someone who loves Shmili. I mean, right now, it's Sphira, so people can't really listen to his music, but they could hear his story. So go ahead and share. Until next time, keep on being inspirational. L'chaim. Living L'chaim. <laughs>